Embroidery is easier than you think. We'll be sharing some tips to get you started and get you embroidering like a pro. All you need to get started is your embroidery machine, your favorite colored thread, and some fabric. In today's video, we will be talking about machine embroidery, and we use the Baby Lock Array, which is a multi-needle machine. But the tips that we'll be sharing today will apply to all machine embroidery. We'll also cover some of the best places to purchase your supplies so that you can save some money along the way. Now let's tackle the elephant in the room. Embroidery is expensive, and unfortunately, it's probably the biggest barrier in getting started with machine embroidery. The machine is the biggest investment. A reliable single needle machine can start anywhere around $500 and go up to tens of thousands of dollars for a multi-needle machine. But don't worry, we're here with some helpful tips to help you save some money along the way. All right, so let's talk about the supplies that you'll be needing. You'll need a total of five supplies to get started with an embroidery project. Later, we'll share some nice to have items that have made our lives a lot easier, but for now, we'll just get started with the essentials. All right, let's talk about stabilizers. So there are a few different options that each serve their own purpose. Your first one is going to be your cutaway stabilizer, and this stabilizer is used for flimsier, softer fabrics, such as crew necks that are gonna need more stability to keep those threads in place. Your next stabilizer is the tearaway stabilizer, and this one is used for fabrics that are a little bit more rigid already, such as a jean jacket. A water-soluble stabilizer is used for things such as tea towels or beanies where it needs just a little bit of support to not have those stitches sink through the fabric. Titles of these stabilizers help you uh, remember how you remove them. So your cutaway, you'll need scissors, to cut the excess stabilizer. Tear away, you can just use your hands to tear it away. And water soluble, you use water to dissolve the stabilizer. All right, let's talk about embroidery thread. And just like stabilizer, there are various options available that each will give you kind of a different finish. Some of the options that are available are polyester, rayon, metallic, and cotton threads. Right, so your polyester thread is going to be the one that's a little bit more durable. The color will stick longer to the thread, so it's going to be more long-lasting. Rayon thread is similar, but not as robust as polyester. Your rayon thread is going to be a little bit more vibrant and give more of an elegant finish to your product. Cotton thread will give you that matte finish, so ideal for some of those um, rustic projects. It's not as strong as the polyester or the rayon thread, so you might get a little bit more thread breaks and you'll have to really work with the tension. Metallic thread is a little more luxurious, however more delicate to play with. As you get started, it's a good idea to play around with a few of these different options. That way you can figure out what works best for you. Now let's talk about bobbin thread. Bobbin thread is just as important as the embroidery thread as it provides the stability on the underside of the project. When choosing bobbin thread, it's important that you specifically purchase a bobbin thread that's specific for machine embroidery as it's designed to withstand the high speeds of the stitching process. Last two items that you'll definitely need are some sharp scissors and some high quality embroidery machine oil. All right, let's talk about saving money because machine embroidery is expensive. So there's a few ways that you can save money along the way. One of the ways that you can save some money is ordering in bulk. If you're committed to machine embroidery and know that you'll be doing this project quite a bit, then it's a good idea to consider ordering some of the supplies that you're gonna be using regularly in bulk. Buying in bulk, although a lot up front, saves you money along the way. Stabilizer is one of those supplies that you should consider ordering in bulk. 
If you're working on a variety of projects of different sizes, this gives you the flexibility to cut out the stabilizer in the sizes that you need. Otherwise, if you purchase the pre-cut sheets of stabilizer, it limits you to what projects you are working on. For the downside of ordering in bulk is that the stabilizer comes in a roll, which means that you have to cut it out yourself. But it's really not that difficult to cut out the stabilizer. All you need is a cutting mat, a ruler as a guide, and a rotary cutting tool. Or if you really need to, you can use those sharp scissors that you already have. All right, so bobbin thread is something you really want to be stocked up with because it's required for all embroidery projects. Bobbin thread that we've been using is the Magna Glide pre-wound bobbin thread in white, which comes in a box of $100 for about $40. These are our favorite for two reasons. One, the high quality of the bobbin thread itself and the magnet in each bobbin makes it easy to replace your bobbin thread with a satisfying click. We'll have links to these supplies in the description below in case you're interested. You can also save some money on your embroidery thread. The larger the spool, the more savings per yard. You'll likely use the smaller threads as you're getting started when you're trying to figure out the different colors and how they'll look on your garment and also as you're testing the different types of thread. A pro tip is that with larger spools, you won't have to change out the thread in your machine as often. Now this isn't sponsored, but for most of our embroidery needs, such as stabilizer and thread, we go to All Stitch and they offer a variety of colors and brands for us to use. Let's talk about the embroidery machine. There are many brands to choose from and it can be very overwhelming to make a decision. So here are some things to keep in mind to help you narrow down your search. Number one. Project complexity and size. First, consider the complexity and how big the embroidery projects you will be doing. A single needle machine will be ideal for more simple projects, such as projects that have few or just one color. And these machines are typically best for people that are getting started. On the other hand, if you are working with more complex or larger designs and you're doing this for a business, then a multi-needle machine will probably be a better option for you. A multi-needle machine will allow you to work with more complex or larger projects that have more colors. And in this way, with the multiple needles and threads, you won't have to be switching out the colors as often. This will reduce your production time, overall saving time and money along the way. Number two, budget and space constraints. A single needle machine is generally more compact and more budget friendly, which is an easy way to get started with embroidery. And of course, the multi-needle machine are larger units that will take up and need a lot more space. However, if you have the space and budget is not an issue, a multi-needle machine is going to offer more long-term value and productivity benefits especially if you're trying to scale up your embroidery business or undertake larger projects. So you have your supplies and your machine is ready to go. What's next? You need a design. This can be another pain point in embroidery, but there's an easy fix. You can access downloads from marketplaces such as Etsy or Creative Fabrica, but you have to be careful of one thing, that is commercial licensing. If you plan to sell your designs or your finished products, you need to make sure that you're allowed to do this and have that commercial licensing. Double check the description of those downloads that specifically states you're able to do that. If you're looking at being more self-sufficient, it may be worth looking at digitizing software and checking YouTube videos to help you learn how to use that software so that you can make designs on your own. We've actually started this ourselves, but we've learned it's quite a time commitment. However, it's so rewarding to see our designs come to life. The third option is hiring someone to digitize the design for you. This is very helpful if you don't have the time to learn how to digitize. And if your time is better used creating the artwork or the design yourself in programs such as Procreate, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. Although we haven't chosen this path, we often hear recommendations to use Fiverr or Upwork to find talented digitizers. Before we jump into showing you our process for embroidery, let's review a few items that have made our embroidery process just that much more efficient and fun. One of the biggest issues that we faced as we started our embroidery journey was a constant thread breaks. 
We really couldn't figure out what was going on. We tried adjusting the tension of the bobbin thread based on the manual instructions. We also looked up tutorials on how to troubleshoot this issue. And we even tried different embroidery thread. Although some of these tips helped, it didn't completely fix the issue. And we were still having multiple thread breaks during our projects. After a ton of research, we finally realized what we were missing and that was a proper way to measure the tension of the bobbin and the embroidery thread. This thread tension gauge is extremely helpful in dialing in both the tension of the embroidery thread and your bobbin thread. Once we measured and reset all the threads to the same tension, we no longer have any thread breaks. Now one of the most time consuming aspects of embroidery is hooping your design. We really struggled with hooping our designs and making sure that they were straight and centered on the garment. We turned to YouTube for tips and tricks, but these tips weren't helpful in the long run in making our small business efficient. We finally came across Mighty Hoops and their Hoop Master Station. Again, this video is not sponsored by any of these companies, but we highly recommend getting into these Mighty Hoops as soon as you can. Especially if you're running your embroidery machine a lot, you will save so much time and headaches with this system when it comes to aligning and hooping your garment. The last nice to have is simple but key for a professional finish to your embroidery work. A thread burner or even better a small torch will help make sure any tieways on the underside of the fabric don't become loose or get ripped off. Not to mention they are so satisfying to use. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, here is a step-by-step -step process on how we embroider a crew neck for our small business. Now first I'm going to be transferring the embroidery file to our embroidery machine and we've been using the Hatch Embroidery 3 software. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there on how to use it and it's been really fun to use. And now that I have the file, I'm going to create the center line on the fabric uh, by first folding it in half to create that center line on the crew neck. I'll be using a ruler and some chalk. Um, this is a really nice option because it gives you a variety of colors based on the color of the fabric. So I'll use that to uh, create some dotted lines down the center using the ruler, not as a straight, straight edge to um, create that line, but as a way to push down and create that center seam. I'll start here at the top and work my way down, creating a few lines down the center. All right, and so at this point, I have several lines to guide me down the center of the garment. And to start, we will flip these magnet hinges up to hold the stabilizer in place. The hoop that I'm using is the six and a quarter by eight and a quarter size, and the stabilizer that fits this size is a nine by 11. Once I get that stabilizer in there, I can um, secure it in place with those magnet hinges. And again, I'll be using the lines that I created with the chalk to line up with that center line on the station. Here I'm making sure that there are no wrinkles on the crew neck and that the seams are aligning well on the shoulder area of the frame. And now for the magic, all you got to do is push down and the magnets do the magic. And this will give you a perfect placement. Now let's move to the embroidery machine. I'm going to place the frame into the machine and double check that the fabric did not get caught on the underside or the arm of the machine. Before I hit embroider, I'm going to make sure that the design is going to fit in the hoop. And this is really important to do, especially when you're using aftermarket hoops, in this case, using the Mighty Hoop with the Baby Lock Array. And here you can see that the center line that we drew out with the chalk aligned perfectly with the laser. And now I'm double checking that the spool on the embroider machine matches the color that I need for the design. 
And now we hit start and let the machine do its thing. The great thing about the baby lock machine is that you have access to the IQ Intuition monitoring app, which means you can step away from the project and keep an eye on where it's at, how much time is left, uh, what color thread it's on, and it'll notify you if there's been an error. So hopefully you have some peace of mind that you can step away from the embroidery machine once it gets going because you've done all of the work beforehand to make sure that it's going to stitch out properly. Now this is a very simple embroidered project. It's only one color and it's text. And so it's not gonna do any um, thread or color changes in this design and it should be a fairly quick one. This crew neck is one of four of our Women Empowerment collection. This collection is available on our shop and you can check out the behind the scenes of making these crew necks by following us on social media. And it's done. And I get that notification that the embroiderer machine finished the project. And now we will move back to our workstation where we will unhoop the design and get it ready to ship. Don't worry about the chalk here remaining on the crew neck, it'll rub off pretty easily with some water. Before I cut away the excess stabilizer, I'm going to use a torch to burn off the ends of the thread for this embroidered project. So I just run a little bit of that flame over the top of the design here. And we should be good. We are ready to now cut the excess stabilizer using your sharp scissors. I'm gonna start by making sure that the stabilizer is in line and touching the scissors itself. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit of force to glide the scissors down the project. And again, if they're really sharp, you're not gonna need to be squeezing those scissors. And by squeezing those scissors, you're gonna increase the risk of potentially cutting the fabric, and we don't want that. When you trim the excess stabilizer, you wanna get really close to the design so that there's no excess stabilizer that can be a little irritable to the skin. So here I'm just gliding along following the design of the project. And I'm gonna tidy up these corners here. There's a little bit of an extra stabilizer on these two sections. So I, I like to do a little bit of a rounding so it's a little bit smoother and not a hard edge. And here's the final look. And I'll quickly fold this crew neck by using this folding guide. And the final touch is adding a tag to our crew neck. And our tags provide some care instructions on the back side. And it's a quick reminder for how to care for a new embroidered crew neck. And with that, your crew neck is ready to be shipped out. Place it into a bag to protect it from the elements. We hope you found these tips to be helpful as you start or continue your embroidery journey. If you did, then clicking that like and subscribe button will help others find this video too. If you'd like tips on how to prepare for your next or your very first launch, then check out this video here. Hope to see you in the next video. Embroidery is easier than you think. Here are some tips to help you embroider like a pro. You had it. Oh, here we go again. Machine embroidery. Oops. <laughs> Stabler. That's a hard word. One of those. Oh, God. What word am I looking for? Uh, supplies. Okay. Now you. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, jeez. Okay.